Uh, today we learn about full load and incremental load. Okay. Yeah. So any idea what is full load and what is incremental load? No. So full load is nothing but every day we'll get the full data. Okay. Every day we'll get the entire data from the source. Entire data from the source, and we'll truncate the target. Okay, we'll truncate the target and reload it. So with with this, what will happen? For example, if some changes are there in your file, you are truncating the target and reloading it. Every time you will have the latest data. Correct? Yeah. Every time you will have latest data in the table. And what will happen? You will lose the history. History will not be there, right? You will lose the history. Okay. Again, you want to uh, have the history. You can't do the full load. So at any point of time, if you want to have the history, then there is no way like you should uh, uh, go with the full load. Okay. This we call it as a truncate and load as well. Okay. Truncate and load. So truncate and load means what? It will truncate the data. It will remove the data completely from your target and reload the fresh data that is coming from your source. Okay. So what is incremental load or delta load? You call it as incremental or delta, okay? Any name, you can call it with any name, incremental load or delta load. Here, what we'll do? We will zoom the data, which is changed after the last run, okay? It's changed after the last run. We don't consume all the data from the source, okay? Even if they are giving us all the data, what we do is we will read only the data, whichever is updated after the last run. Okay. So there is no point of reading uh, again and again, the same data, even though there are no changes, right? Yeah. Because it's having the same data. So there is, uh, what is the point of reading that particular data? So that is not required for us. That's the reason what we do. We'll read only subset of data and that subset should be updated after the last run. Okay. So in this yeah. case, normally what we follow is for the first time, okay, for the first time, we have to read the entire data, all right? Because we don't have any data. For the first time, whenever you are loading the data into your table, do you have any data in the target table? No, right? So at the time, we have to read the entire data from your source, okay? This is for the first time. From second time onwards, from second time onwards, from second time onwards, we'll read the data. We'll read the data, whichever is updated. Okay, whichever is updated. So what we need to have in order to identify which is updated in the source. So now if I give you, okay, I'll let me open the employee file. That's what we are working right from so many days. So if I open this, okay, now, is there any way you can identify which is updated? No. No. So what we need to have whenever we are going for incremental data load is you should have, you should have create or update column, create or update column in your source. Okay. Should have this data. Then only you will be able to identify whether any record is updated or not in your source. Okay. Yeah. So now you know how to do full load, truncate and load. Yeah. Uh, how we do that truncate and load? We just delete the target and. Yeah. So the there is an option in the target. Postcard. Okay. There is an option in the target there if you have to enable truncate and load correct yeah. so that's what we have done uh, for few of the tables right if you go to workflow yeah. manager okay there at the session level at the target level properties are there in those properties you have to <laughs> truncate the data you have to enable the option to truncate it okay you have to enable the option to truncate it okay so 
what is this? These are essay type one. So they will not act in this. Let's open this batch two. In some or other, I think they have a table update strategy. This is different. Target employee file. Did we enable that option here? So here. This is a file, okay, target is a file. Here uh, it is a target, again, this is target file department. Department router is there. This is also, what is this? This is also file writer, okay. Target department files. So these are department files, okay. DB employee, so if you go here, you'll be able to see the truncate and load option is there. So you have enabled the truncate and load. So if you enable this, what it will do? It will truncate the data or it will remove the entire data from your table and then it will reload it as a page. Yes. Correct? So now we are aware of how to do the truncate and load. Let's see how to do the incremental load. So what I have mentioned, what is your, uh, what are the uh, prerequisites? You should have some updated date, right? And yes. you should store last run date you should store last run date if you store last run date then only you will be able to identify okay after this time whatever is updated you please get the data karke, you can mention if you are not storing this data is there any way you can identify what is the last run date no no so what we have to do first we have to identify if we have updated data or created date column we call this as an audit column okay updated data or created data is there in your source. And also you have to make sure that you have to design the mapping in such a way that you have to store the last run date. Okay. Yeah. Clear. Yeah. So for this, let's do one thing. Let's go to SQL developer. We have a table, FF underscore employees is there, right? So in this you have the data, but you don't have any date here. So you have created some other tables, right? Department is there, for example, okay? Now you have this department, in this you have created date and updated date, correct? Create date and updated date is there. So let's do one thing. Let's create the, let's consider this as a source department. Let's create a target department, okay? Create table, create table, or you, or you can also do like this. So let's start from this, okay? So let's start from this, and then what you will do? Create a table, okay? Create table, target underscore department underscore delta as this one, okay? There, or you can, you need not to have this one as well. You can truncate the data. You can create the data like this. So if you go and check the data in this, you will have the data. Okay, this is one way, one more way of creating the table. You can, you are selecting the data and you are pushing the data to this table. Okay, this is one more way of creating the table in your array. Okay. Did you see, yeah. you have the data, right? So yeah. what I'm doing for the first time, truncate table, I'm truncating it, okay? I'm truncating it, okay? Now you don't have any data. Let's do one thing. We have to get the data from department table and load it into target underscore department delta by using informatica, okay? That too, in the incremental way, we have to do it, okay? Yeah. Let's go to 
design R and let's try to create a mapping. Okay. Create M underscore. Okay. Department. Okay. M underscore department incremental load. Incremental load. Okay. Yeah. Now create this mapping. So what you need? You need a source first, right? Yeah. Source. Do you have this source department source is available for you? Yeah. It is there. So get it here. Okay. Get this. You have create date and update date. Okay. So we need department ID, department name, and create date is not required. Create date, it should be specific to your target. Whenever you are creating the data in the target, at the time only, what is the time at the, uh, uh, you have to identify the time of creation of the record in the target table, and you have to load it. That we will identify by using system timestamp, okay? I'm removing yeah. it as it is not required. And do we need update date? Yeah. Why we need update date? When there is an update in data. Yeah, so we have to right. identify whether there is an update in the data or not. Okay. Clear? Yeah. Now yeah. apply it. Press OK. Now what we have to do? We have to add the target. target. Okay. Let's go to targets. Do we have a department here? Do you have department structure? Yeah, second. We have here, okay. We have here. So, where it is highlighted? Yeah, here it is there, okay. Department ID, department and create date, update. So, you can use this, okay. You can use this. Now, let me drag this department here. So, in order to load the data, first we have to identify whether any record is updated or not, right? Yeah. The record is updated or not. So for that, what we have to do? Look up. For that, no, look up is to look for the data. Okay, what we do with the lookup? Look up is to join Jupiter. the data and then see if the data is there in that particular table. Okay, we want to join yeah. two tables, then we'll go for lookup. Okay, then we'll go for lookup. Here, what we do is, here, what we do, we'll create one variable. Okay, you have to go to mappings parameters and variables. So how you will create the variables? Now to go to mappings tab, here you have an option, parameters and variables. Here create a variable, okay? Create a variable. What you have to give? Here, give it as last run date, okay? Last run date. So what is the time of the last run? That's what you will store here, okay? It is a variable. So there are two types, parameters and variables. Create it as a variable, okay? Because every time it will change. Parameter won't change, whereas variable, it can change, okay? So that's the reason we are we are keeping it as a variable. Yeah. And what we are storing in this? Date and time. Date and time, okay? And let's go ahead and add the expression, okay? In this expression, what we have to do? We have to calculate the you have to calculate create date and update date, right? So now move this, okay? Move this and add timestamp here, okay? How to add the timestamp? How to add the current time? Current date time, okay? What should be the data type? So date time should be the data type. And what is the function that we need to use? What is the function? Ashok, which function we need to use? System timestamp. System timestamp. Okay. We are using system timestamp. And what you need to do is here you need to create a you need to create a code. Okay. This is this is V underscore, okay, last run date, you can say. V underscore last run date. Here, what you will do, you will make it as a variable, okay? You will make it as a variable, and then, okay? You will make it as a variable, and then you will set the variable as set max variable. Set max variable will take two, two 
parameters okay two parameters it will take first one is your variable and then which value you have to assign to that particular variable so what variable we have created yeah. this variable that we have created mapping variables right. for this what we have to assign what which column we need to assign updated date so what it will do is it will take the max value okay it will see what is the value of the last run date and what is the value of updated date whichever is maximum it will go and assign to this last run date okay so if for example if last run date is greater than updated date then it won't do anything if it is less than update date then it will be assigned to the last run date okay so yeah. basically what it will do is for this variable okay for this variable it will assign the max of these two okay clear yeah. so what we are yeah. doing here indirectly incompatible data to field is a string expression is date time is field is string exp okay field we have created it as a string okay now what we have to do we have to make it as date time okay you have to make it as date time now if you go and validate it it will validate properly okay set max variable what it will do it will assign the maximum value of these two to last run date and there are other functions okay what is this set count variable so it will count the number of records and mini variable means minimum value. it will minimum. assign the minimum value set variable means it will assign whatever is coming from this particular column to this okay but here what we want we want to get the last run date and that should be the last maximum date whatever is there okay because in table we can have hundreds of records so we should not assign each and every date here okay whatever is the maximum updated date that's what we need to assign here okay yeah. clear now apply okay okay so now come here you have to do one change here if you see here if you see here you generate the sql you are reading all the data right you are reading all the data what you have to do you have, what is our requirement we are doing incremental load right so for incremental load what we need to do we have to read yeah. only updated data we have to read only updated data so here you have updated date it should be greater than or equal to it should be greater than or yeah. equal to your last run date okay your last run date this is what it is right so what you are doing here get the data from my department table wherever the updated date is greater than last run date okay clear yeah. so here now if you go and check the data you go and check the data in the department table what is the format of the data you have and read by 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 right so here you have yeah. to convert it to you have to two date okay cd m y y y hours 24 okay minutes and then seconds okay let's do this and then let's validate it okay validate the sql query invalid sql query it is saying okay an error was detected what it is saying two date last run date what we have given here okay date may e is not there okay two date is not there validated invalid query still it is saying like invalid query let me take this and then run it in sql developer here let's write update date so it is working fine here so what we have to do here let's just add this let's see okay what will happen is working over there fine validate valid query why it is saying set the status bar while validating it let me add this 
no errors detected. Okay, we have to give this. Okay, let's see what will happen. It will replace this value. So what will happen? It will take the parameter and it will replace that value within this parameter within this variable. Okay, wherever you are using this variable, it will replace it. So now let's do this. Apply. Then okay. Save it. It is invalid because we did not. We did not link it to target, right? Now create timestamp. Now we are doing it. Okay. Now yes. here, what we have to do? We have to update the data, right? We have to either insert yes. it or update it. So for updating, what we yes. have to do? Update setting. No. So before, in order to identify whether there is an update or not, first we have to look up for the target data. Okay. We have to look for the target data. Based on department ID. Okay. Based on department ID. Now, here, if there is a match, okay, what we have to do? Let's get the target department ID here. Okay. Let's get the target department ID. What should be the condition here? This department, department ID is coming from import. Okay. Department ID is coming from import. Okay. Now go to condition. Add this department ID, department ID, you are matching. Okay. Yeah. Clear. Apply. Yeah. Okay. Now you got the department ID here. This is which department ID we got here? Target department okay. ID we got, right? So target department yeah. ID. Target department ID. Target department ID. Now you have to use the router to identify whether it is an insert or update. Okay. Yeah. You have to use router to identify whether it is an insert or update. So here, get the data, get all the data, create two groups. One is for insert, one is for update, right? One is yeah. for insert, one is for update. When you will say it as an insert, When there when is there no is data last. in the target, right? When there is no data in the target. How can you say when there is no data in the target? When target department ID. When target null. department ID is null. Okay. When it is null, you can say like it is an insert. When it is not null, you can say Up. there is some update. Okay. Let's just go with this. Yeah. Let's not verify the data for other columns. Okay. Yeah. So for now, what we have to do, we have to link it to insert, yeah. insert department name, depa department ID, department name, then create time. Right. One more department. What we need again now. One more target. One more target we need for that. Copy it. Paste it. Okay. And then this is update. update. This is update. This is insert. insert. And what do we need here? One more thing or anything do we need here? We need to come. we need to have update strategy, right? We need to have update strategy because we have to update the data, right? Yeah. We have to update the data in the target. So what we need? DD. DD underscore, DD underscore. Update and get the data from your update update group to yeah. update strategy. Okay. And then now link your department id department name anything updated current. and your current timestamp updated date you can give it here but what is missing here we are missing key right we are yeah. missing key so what we have to do or to go here how to define the department id as key if key is not defined what will happen it will not update it it will not be able to know by using which column it should update okay Clear? Arrange yeah. all iconic. 
save it valid or not okay it is valid now what we have to do let's go to this one okay and let's add a session let's add a session for delta load where is the delta incremental load incremental load where you see it yeah incremental load yes. now come here mapping source is there okay your source dev2 is there you have query right your query update date and everything query is there okay sql query is there and then here we have to change it to yeah. normal and then what is our target table what is our target table target department target. Is for delta so now come here and then add target table name as target department delta here also target department delta and here your lookup should be pointed to what is source dev2 okay apply okay let to change it to normal Insert. Yeah, we have to change it to normal for the other one as well. We have to change it to normal. Okay. Save it. It is saved. Let's see what will happen. I think it will fail because of that parameter, that initial value. Let's see how it is taking, what initial value it is taking. But it is succeeded. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. Data got loaded into your, it is going to? Yeah. Why it is going yeah. into the, okay. Applied rows, it, everything came to update. Okay. Everything yeah. came to update. Why it is, why it came to update? Because if you see in your lookup condition, lookup properties, on which table we are looking up? We are reading from the department, department only. We are looking up on the department only. But what is our target table? Target department. Target department data. You got it? So here we have to change the date table to target department data. Correct? Yes. Yeah. Because we have to look up on our target, right? Yes. Yeah. So save it. Now, if you see here, it was coming to your update, but nothing was affected here. Why it is not affected? Let's go and see. It is not giving any error as well. Okay. Control F. Bad data is also not there. Why it is not updated? Rejected row zero and this is zero. Nothing was there. Why it is? Last hundred, see here what it is taking 5523. It is taking the, do you see here? You can see it here, right? Yeah. 5523 815. 815 24 run instance name. Let's see what is the SQ query that was generated. Okay. What is the SQL yeah. query? SQ query. Okay. Control F. SQ. SQ. Okay. It, it is coming here. Yeah. Let's go to the start. Use default value for mapping variable. Default value is not there. So what it is doing? Control F SQ. For lookup, I am getting SQ. For this one, lookup again. This is also lookup. Okay. SQ instance. See here, what is the default value it took? 11723. You got it right here. So you can yeah. check what date it is taking. Is it replacing or not? Is it, re it is replacing your last undate with this value. Okay. What is the default value it took? We, if you are not mentioning anything, it will take the default value as this one. We tried to give it in the same format. Now it is not working, right? I have yeah. to see why it is not working. 
but if you go here mapping variables okay mapping variables let me try to give this default value this one only validate it in shell value oh now it is coming fine we give we the same thing the... oh we no, gave we single quotes column yeah single quotes ah okay got it got it fine okay now we are giving initial value as this save it control s okay now let's see what will happen here we do, i don't see why the data is getting rejected let's see in writer what is happening whenever it is writing the data output rows 9 affected yeah, zero applied rows 9 this showing applied rows 9 rejected rows 9 applied yeah, we didn't apply in the map in the map in the map when we yeah, in the update strategy update transformation in the properties we didn't apply yeah it's... it is there no yeah it is there dd underscore update is there let's see what is there in our department table first we have only nine okay so only nine was created on 5 5 this is fine data was not getting updated okay data was it is there it will get updated you were this should get updated but nothing was updated why now to see here we should understand why it is not updating it is not even failing at least it should reject the data i don't see even if it is it is rejected okay yeah control f writer writer initialize connecting to your database okay target database update where department id this is also bulk mode is off this is also fine writer initialization is complete it is not giving anything okay let's see anyways we changed it to delta let's run it one more time and then check it out okay before that what we need to do is if you go to this session if you see view persistent variables see it is storing the last run date right yeah it is storing the last run date but we should not store the last run date because our first run is not loaded into the actual table so reset values so it will go to the first value okay initial value okay so this is how it will store the data every time okay whenever the last run is happening it will store the last run date there is a change in the mapping so i have refreshed it okay let me rerun it okay let me rerun it it is succeeded now what is happening it loaded the data into your target okay it is loading the data into your target what is your target your target is delta right let me remove all of this you got the data into your target yeah now let's go and change something in your source What is your source department, right? Set set department name equal to department name equal to test two test two where where department ID equal to nine. Okay, and then we have to update the updated date. Then only you will be able to read it, right? Because yeah, if you go and check in the session. okay what is the uh, persistent variable you have last run date you have so after this date whatever is changed you will read only that data as per the logic right because that's what you wrote yeah. in the sql query right what you are doing here yeah. updated date should be greater than it should be greater uh, than sorry. last run date so if the if now if you run it okay now let me run it i am not doing i am not done any changes at the database level right i have not updated it as of now so if you run it what will happen it will again give the same so you will get nine records or zero records zero so see here sq department how many records you got you got one record one. okay you got one record see what happened to that record okay see what happened sorry 
to execute this. So this test record came. Test record got updated. Okay, at eight fifty. If you see here, test record is there. Five five twenty three eight fifteen is there. Okay, why it is coming? Why it is coming? Because because if you see here, what we are doing in SQL query, it is greater than or equal to we have given, right? It is giving greater than or equal to, but we should give greater than because greater than or equal. What is happening? Even though there is no change, it is storing this data. Right? Max of this updated data, right? Max of updated data it is storing. So what will happen with that? Every time it is reading this data. So let's go and make it. Let's remove that equal to. Okay. Let's remove that equal to. Okay. You got it. Why one record is coming? Yeah. Now, if you run it, what will happen? I uh, remove mm -hmm. equal to. What will happen? How many records you will get? Eight. How many you will get? You will get zero because nothing got updated in the target, right? Nothing got yeah. updated in the target. Did you update anything in the target? No. No, that's the reason it will not return anything. Now let's go ahead and update the department ID equal to nine. Okay, updated, update date, update date equal to this date. Okay, update date equal to this date. So what it will do now? One row is updated, right? One row is updated. Okay, one row is updated in the department. It is updated seventeen five eight fifty two, right? Now let's yeah. insert one record. Insert into TGT department delta values. What values will give? Will give ten. What is the other department? Delta testing. Yeah. Okay. Delta test department. Let's give this one. Okay. And then create date is his date, update date is his date. Now one more row inserted. If you say the data in the department, now you have to record. What is this test to department? Test to is there? And the update date. Oh, we have target. inserted into target. Sorry, I'm doing this. How to do this? Okay, let me roll back everything because. What will happen? It will be there in the target role, target table, right? So yeah. let me update this and uh, let me insert this. If you go to department, we have this department test and test two. Okay. Yeah. Now, if you read the data from your source, what data you will get? It will read updated. Two. Only it should read these yeah. two records. Because only these two records were updated okay. after the last run. Clear? Yeah. Okay. Now, if you see here, view persistent values. Here it is there 815. Okay. It is there as 815. Now, what do you have to do? You have to go and start it. Okay. How many records will come here? Two records came. One went into insert, one went into update. Because there okay. is one insert, one update in the target, right? Instead of reading whole data, you are reading only incremental data. Clear? Yeah. Now, if you go to session and then see the uh, latest value of last hundred, what it will be there? It is there as 853. Okay, 853. So this is how you will do the incremental data, data load. Okay. Understood yeah. here what it is covered yeah. in this you are covering SRE type one as well because you are trying to insert and then update and also you are doing incremental load. Okay, you are doing incremental load. Any doubts you have here?
Any doubts, Ashok? No, no, no. You are clear? Yeah. So all this look up and everything, okay? Look up and everything. This is kind of because if you you want to load the data as an insert and update, because of that you are getting all of this. But normally, if you yes. want to just look at only incremental data, you can just add expression and then target. That's it. Okay. And in this expression, yeah. what is the very important thing here when you are doing incremental load? Target department ID and this one is very last important. Run. Here you have to assign it to the set max variable of last run date. Okay. You have to assign the value to the last run date. Okay. Yes. So this is very, very important. So what will happen? Do we need to use updated date only here? Instead of this, no. can I use the session uh, session start time? Yeah. You can use session start time, right? Yeah. You go to here, built-in variables will be there. Okay. Here, what will be there? You have uh, session start time. So whenever this session is getting started, it will store that time because up, as of now, whatever data is there, I'm reading it. Next time, I will read whatever is updated after updated. my last session run time. Okay? You need not to go with only yeah. update date or whatever is there in the target. You can go with session start time as well. But you have to make sure that you have to make sure your Informatica yeah. and your source system are in the same time zone. If both are in different time zone, Sessions timestamp will store uh, will give different value and your actual time will be different. If it is in US time and if uh, session start time is stored in Indian uh, time, then it will be kind of there is a difference, right? Even though there is a change from your yeah. night to our morning, it will not read that data. So that's the reason mostly we'll go with the audit okay. columns that are present in source table. Okay. okay? Audit columns yeah. that are present in source table. That's the reason we'll go in that way. Okay. Clear? Yeah. Now, yeah. now today we have learned about the incremental data load. How we are doing incremental data load? We are going ahead and creating a variable last run date. Okay. There is a mapping variable last run date. We are making it as a date time and we are giving some default value as 1900. Okay. Default value is some 1900 so that whenever the data is getting loaded for the first time, will read the entire data and then what is a very important step after that you have to come to expression last run date. and you have to update the date last for that particular last run date with the updated date okay clear yeah any doubts no okay i think that's it for today's session let's meet tomorrow then okay Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye.